Welcome again to the Watchman Radio Program. My name is Minister Curtis Roach. I'm from Shiloh Revival Tamanaka. This program, the Watchman Radio Program, it is all about the end times and to open up our awareness to the times that we are living in. And of course, to make us aware of the soon and imminent coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to rapture his bride and indeed he is on his way and we are here every week every friday from 4 p.m to 5 p.m to warn you to let you know that jesus christ is coming we are living in the end times and we are to be preparing ourselves not only uh, preparing but we actually are to be prepared all ready to go because the time is that short of course, again, this is a pre-recorded program as I'm still not able to come to you live. Hopefully, uh, from next week, I will be able to come to the studio to give you this live uh, broadcast. But for today, I want to share with you an, a testimony. A testimony that was shared by our brother there in Botswana. His name is uh, Brother Otositse. I have had him on the program twice before. A man of God who the Lord is using mightily in these end times. He had an awesome vision as he so describes it. And I want to share it with you. It's a, a long read, but uh, it is uh, something that I thought was a very inspiring and encouraging. And I know it will be the same for you as you listen to it. So I want to read this uh, testimony in its entirety. And I want you to sit back, relax, invite a friend, a family member or two to listen with you. Of course, again, this is Everlasting Life Radio. We are broadcasting live from the United Kingdom. You are listening to the Watchman Radio program. And so I'll get into the testimony that was given by Brother Otositse from Botswana in Africa. It's an experience he had on Sunday, this Sunday that has just passed us. He had an awesome experience and he shared it on uh, Facebook the other day. I read it and I want to bring it to you right now. So without further ado, let me get into the testimony. And I'll read. Yesterday, which was Sunday... I had an awesome vision. Jesus appeared to me, revealed things to me. One of the things was healing revival to hit the church. I could feel the anointing at the church and also later at home. Today I had a supernatural experience. It happened around past six in the morning. My wife had just left for work. I was taken into a crystal clear vision. The Lord showed me certain famous pastor. In that vision, this man came to me wearing a white suit and he started looking around my house and bed. He asked me, how are you able to experience God like this, to experience the supernatural? I looked at him, I said, sir, we can find God only through prayer and his word. These words, I was speaking them by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I felt them coming right from my spirit. The Lord was revealing how we can experience deep intimacy with Him and grow spiritually. It is only through the Word of God and fervent prayer. Acts chapter 6 verse 4 says, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. I further said to him, God told me you were coming and what you are thinking. I then asked the man about his preaching and sermons. I said to him, why don't you preach about eternal realities, heaven, rapture, hell, holiness, etc. The man said, those topics scare people and sends people away from church. They will reduce church membership. 
I want a large church. I asked the man, so you rather preach what people want in order to have a large congregation? He said, yes. I asked him, what about what God wants? He laughed. <laughs> he began to walk away. I said, you pastors will be in trouble with God. The man stopped, looked back at me and asked, what do you mean? I said to him, for the multitude of souls that you are sending to hell, you will face God in judgment day. You are leading people to hell by not teaching them this important thing. I was shocked that a pastor will care more about pleasing himself and pleasing people rather than God. Especially someone who is esteemed as a man of God by many people. He was afraid to lose members of the church. I was grieved in my spirit. I could discern in my spirit that this pastor did not care about souls. Even if they went to hell. All he wanted was a nice life. A large church congregation. Being wealthy and prosperous financially. The man was also a deliverance minister. He would do deliverance sessions and travel across the world. I was asking myself, why this man won't preach what God wants him to? He won't obey God, yet he is casting out demons. He still has some power to do deliverance. Then I heard the voice of God quoting to me this scripture, Matthew 7.21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. As the voice spoke the words, In thy name casted out devils, were repeated and emphasized. I then knew that a person can cast out demons and perform deliverance in the name of Jesus. But if that person does not live holy and obey God, that person will surely end up in hell. This man was very deliberately disobedient to the call of God. He did not want to preach what God wanted him to preach. There are other things the man vanished from my sight. Luke 13, 24 says, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. In Matthew 20, 16, it says, So the last shall be first and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. Suddenly, I was taken into hell. I was dropped there without warning. I saw myself standing. It was like an edge. The place was dark. Fire was everywhere, but I could see through. I felt fear sweeping over me. The worst kind of fear. It gripped me. I saw a large place with different torments. There was where I saw giant red flames of fire. Then another direction I could see liquid fire, flowing stream of fire. Like after a volcano erupt, then another area I saw thousands upon thousands of pits of fire. Also I saw large rocks, rough stones. It was so real. I remember touching myself, saying to myself, this is real. How did I come here? I heard sounds of billions of people screaming because of the pain in the place. The terror, moans, and scream of the lost and damned. Different people from different generations, races, languages. I felt a strong wave on unbearable heat sweeping across hell. The demons were everywhere, tormenting people. 
I saw a very thin path. There was lava and fire on its side, and it was so thin that a person would fall to either side. The end of it was leading right into the center of the fire. I saw this famous pastor walking into hell on this path. I heard the voice of God speaking from heaven, and I have warned him many times. The man couldn't believe what he saw. He was bewildered. In that path, he couldn't go back. Once you get into it, there is no way back. I knew that any moment something terrible would happen to him. Then the demons will grab him, lead him to the torments assigned to him in hell. The pastor and Christian's torments in hell are too agonizing. Worse punishment and double condemnation. God told me, this is punishment for pastors who will not obey me but try to serve me in their own way. It was very frightening. I felt so sorry for the pastor. Previously, when the Lord took me to hell, I saw thousands of large rocks shaped in form of coffins. It was like coffins made of rock, with small openings on every side, top to bottom. This rock coffin was standing, vertical. Pastors were individually put inside of them. The demons will poke them with sharp spears and objects from outside through the small openings. They will stab the pastor from head to toe, the pastor screaming in agony. When he tries to lift up his head because of the torment, he hits the top of this rock. Another part is where they hang pastors with ropes. Then they feed their mouth with the rocks. When I asked the Lord about this, he said, They are tormented this way because of preaching heresies. Another torment is of wooden crosses. They put them there and nail them to the wooden crosses. The demons will torment them greatly. The Lord showed me also that people are assigned personal demons to torment them according to the kind of sin that brought them there. There is just much to share about hell. In my third book you will see all the visions and the one is the Lord showed me about hell. Mark 9.45 says, And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. God is just one in the pastoral office. Pastors, obey God. Stop tickling people's ears and telling them what they want to hear. Preach the truth. Warn people about sin, judgment, and hell. Live holy. Teach your members the same. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. In hell, there is a space reserved for disobedient pastors and Christians. Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. 2 Timothy 4 verse 1 I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. Then I was taken suddenly from hell. I saw my spirit back on earth, back on my body. After some moments, I saw my spiritual eyes open again. A sensation of my spirit leaving my body began to surface. I began to beg and plead with the Lord. I said, Lord Jesus, 
If you are taking me back to hell, please appear to me and walk with me. I was very frightened by the scene of heaven. I felt his presence around me like I was enveloped with a thick blanket. I could sense even meters around the presence was there. It was so thick. He said to me by voice, I am always with you even if you do not see me. Matthew 28, 18 And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. My spirit left my body. I started feeling like I was descending down and down. I was thinking to myself, I am going to hell again. Then I was racing around Botswana at a great speed. I passed Celebrate Filki and another town. After it, I traveled so fast upwards into the atmosphere. I was praising God as I sang. The words I was singing appeared before me in the screen, written in white. I was so happy. My body was light as a feather, my mind free to think. I felt extraordinary peace fill my soul. I saw myself high above. The earth was like a large blue ball. It was remaining behind and looking above, I was seeing blue skies. I was facing up while laying down on the air with my body. I could hear the sound of wind, whoosh. I remember on the journey, there was a point the Holy Spirit increased my speed tremendously like a great force, energy, catapulating me into the heavens. I felt I was moving at an unbelievable, phenomenal rate of speed. The sound of wind would increase a lot. I panicked a bit. The speed was too much. The Holy Spirit then reduced the speed a bit. I passed region of space, then passed the second heaven. Then came unto the third heaven, the realm of God, the eternal abode of angels and the saints. First I saw light, it was bright, and before me was what can be described as incredible. I saw paradise, I saw different sections and pathways between them. The first section, I saw this area full of tall grass, very green. The second section, I saw a well-tended garden, beautiful, the scenery so stunning. The third section, there was a place where it was blossoming with flowers. I came closer, looked more. I saw that the stems were green. The flowers were pure white. The fourth section, I saw fields of heaven, golden corn. I saw the distant parts of paradise, like forests of trees. I also saw plants that are so different from ones on earth. Variety of colors, upright trees, lively creation, stream of living water. I saw beautiful colors on paradise, gold, white, red, green, blue, clear. The atmosphere was exhilarating. People were moving in paradise, walking, talking, and doing heavenly activities. I couldn't help it but to scream out and praise God. I shouted, Oh Lord, this is beautiful. Wow. There is a place called paradise in heaven. Revelation 2, 7. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. I pass paradise. I flew into the majestic city of heaven. The city was large. There are different levels. There were mansions, homes, and beautiful streets everywhere. Mansions of different designs, shapes, and sizes. They were made with different heavenly materials and were very beautiful. Some of the mansions were occupied, others not occupied. There were tall white buildings like 
large warehouses of some sort different things I can't even describe John 14 1 let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself and where I am there ye may be also I was flying but not far from the ground I took the road going to the north as I flew I saw a large house there were people talking inside I then landed on ground and began to walk on the street I saw two boys coming out of that house running to me they were both one as kids I heard the voice speak in the ear whose mansion is this I then went over to the children began to speak to them they were happy to be there I could tell they smiled and laughed I asked them about the mansion they were they came out of they said this mansion is for Rafi when they called his name it hit my mind a memory came into my mind when I was young staying with my grandmother at the village this man was a friend to my grandmother as I grew up I totally forgot about him I was amazed and happy that not only did he make it to heaven but he had a very beautiful mansion one of the kids had a round colorful thing the thing was round he was eating it and I don't know how to describe it I was amazed I heard a voice the second time telling me about another section of the city I decided to leave the kids walk on the streets start to observe mansions and walk to the other side I heard sounds talking and activities as I looked to the mansions I could also see people moving in, a, in and out the streets were beautiful and clear no litter or dirt I walked looking at different mansions their designs their doors and people moving about them there was a road there were chariots traveling on it some of the chariots flew on the air Psalm 68 17 the chariots of God are 20,000 even thousands of angels the Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place the buildings the mansions and houses were incredible some were very very far on my journey I saw two companions feminine and masculine beings they were talking laughing and looking towards the east I looked to where they looked I saw what appeared like a brilliant light over making this place look like dawn of the morning as I walked I kept talking to myself I see this I see that God please let me remember all these when I get back to earth then I saw a high tower there are other things I saw then the voice of God spoke to me about several things suddenly I came back to earth my spirit did not go back to my body immediately but God took me on a certain path I saw someone who I used to go to school with he goes to Seventh-day Adventist the Lord made me know by inward revelation that he thinks he is saved but he is not saved and is lost now it's my mission to go and witness to him before it's too late for him the Lord told me that there are many people like him on earth who think they are born again but the reality is this they are not they will not even want to hear when someone wants to share the true gospel with them so that they can be saved they feel they know a lot and they are saved already such people after that they will find themselves in an undesirable place we must truly accept Jesus Christ in our lives as our Lord and personal Savior then live for him in truth this is the only way we can inherit the kingdom of heaven John 3 5 Jesus answered very very I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the Spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit marvel not that I say unto thee you must be born again 
2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The Lord also brought to my attention that he and others like him, they criticize and oppose the true works of the Holy Spirit and say a lot of unscriptural doctrines such as there is no life after death, no hell, no rapture, etc. After that, I saw a certain guy. This guy met with a certain sister. They went out into the country and committed fornication. The wages of sin is death. Fornication leads to hellfire. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor junkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. I saw certain people oppressed by demons and God was using his servants to set them free. God said, as true believers we must set people free from bondage of demons. In the name of Jesus we must cast out the demons. Mark 16, 15 And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Suddenly my spirit came unto my body. And I opened my eyes. I began to feel the presence of God around me. This was a powerful experience I had today. Hell is so real. Heaven is so real. We must live in holiness. We must preach and teach people the truth. Obey God. And that is the end of that uh, powerful vision that our brother Otosisse from Botswana, Africa, had on this Sunday, Sunday Gone. You are listening to The Watchman. There are several messages that you can get out of the vision that I have just read to you. All of which you have heard over and over again on this program that heaven is real hell is real holiness is required to see God that we must be teaching and preaching the word of God at every turn at every opportunity that we get there's so many things that the Lord is saying through his servants, through his prophets, to his people today. We confirm in everything that we already know. We confirm in everything that is written in his word. And so we have to be mindful. We have to be watchful. We have to be careful. To be obedient. To listen, to know, and to act. Act upon what we know. Act upon what we believe. Act upon the instructions that the Lord has given us. The mandate that he has given to each and every one of us. We must strive to be in the will of God at all times. For in his will we will find the, the way that we are to go. It is in his will we will know purpose. When we are in his, in his will, he will be able to direct us, to lead us according to his will and way. Helping us to fulfill the call which he has preordained for us from since before time began. And 
so we have very little time left and so the Lord he is sending these warnings here there and everywhere very strong warnings very strong words telling us that the time is now to get up off of our seats to stand up start walking get out there preach his word Yes, we want to get to heaven, but the Lord wants us to bring somebody with us. We should not be selfish with our salvation. We have received freely, and we should freely give. The salvation that we have, we are to share it with our brothers and sisters out there in the world who are lost. We are indeed living in a dark world, a world that grows darker and darker as the second goes by. And so we must, as the light of the world, illuminate the areas where we go. Everywhere we go, we must be the light that Christ wants us to be, to illuminate the place that people will see Christ in us. When we speak, they will hear Christ. When we move, they will see Christ. And so, this word is coming to you today with all authority, with all assurance of His authenticity, letting you know that the coming of the Lord is indeed near. And we are to be out doing what we are supposed to be doing while it is day because night is fast approaching. Keeping our heads up because our redemption draws nigh. For those of you Christians who are out there, who are engulfed in the world and the things of the world and the pursuits of the world, the time is now to come away from that. The time is now to come away from that. The time is now to look up. To look up on the things that are above. And to shut away the things that are from the world and of the world. Heaven is awaiting us. But we will not get there if we are not in the right place at the right time we must repent repent of all of our sins live a holy life shun the wrong and do the right for those of you over there who are not saved Jesus is calling you today Jesus is standing in front of you with outstretched arms, ready to take you in. All you need to do is just to confess your sins, acknowledge him for who he is, and ask him to forgive you of all of your sins and to write your name in the book of life. So wherever you are, you should be saying that prayer right now, knowing that tomorrow is not promised to you. Don't put it off for the next second. You do not know if you will live to see tomorrow. So if you want to be saved today, I want to give you that opportunity. I will even help you with a short prayer. And if you want to say that prayer today, wherever you are, just lift your hearts up towards heaven and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Know that you are the Son of God. So I come to you with an open heart. And I ask you, as I acknowledge that I am a sinner, to forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Write my name in the book of life today. 
I thank you for answering my prayer. I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that short prayer, if you have said it with a sincere heart, and you believe everything that you have asked for, that you have received, you are now saved. Congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. The Watchman. 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 I want to thank you once more for tuning in to another edition of the Watchman Radio Program, broadcasting live from the United Kingdom, from London, England, to be exact. If you'd like to contact me for any reason, you can find me on Facebook. You can search for my name, which is Minister Curtis Roach. You can add me and you can send me a message. I'll be able to respond to you. Alternatively, you can search for the page for this program, which is the Watchman Radio Program. We, I will be posting this program also and other posts uh, that will help you and encourage you and uh, other stuff there that will help to build you up in your Christian walk. They are all there. You can go to that page and uh, you, know, you like the page so that you can follow it. And of course, uh, I do have a YouTube channel uh, under my name, Curtis Roach, where I also upload all of these radio programs. You can go there should you want to hear this program again, to share it, and other programs there that will help you along the way. You will find all of them there. Once again, thank you for listening. I was your host. Minister Curtis Roach from Shiloh Revival Tamanaki. Until next week, God bless. Come. Jesus come.